Did you know that Britain has more than 250 species of native bee? All of these bees play an essential role in your garden by pollinating flowers. But these bees are becoming scarce, with fewer wildflowers and suitable nest sites, and an increase in pesticide use. Now around 25% of all native bees are listed as endangered species. Out of these 250 species, over 90% of them are solitary bees. By solitary we mean that a single female, after she emerges from her pupae and is mated by a male, constructs, provisions and lays an egg in each cell in a nest by herself. This is very different from social bees like the bumblebees, honeybees and stingless bees, all of whom have a queen who lays eggs, and a number of workers who look after them. Female solitary bees prepare their own nest in the ground, in cracks or crevices in walls, or in wood. They gather nectar and pollen as food for their own offspring, and provide little or no further care after their eggs are laid. Solitary bees come in many different sizes, colors and shapes. Common solitary bees are mason bees, minor bees, sweat bees, wool carding bees and carpenter bees. They vary in color from basic black to bright metallic green, blue or red. Some solitary bees superficially resemble wasps. There are too many solitary bees to name and talk about each one individually, so we only feature a few. We will also show how you can help them survive. We begin with the leaf cutter and mason bees, which are collectively called megachylids. Leaf cutter bees nest in soft, rotted wood, thick stemmed pithy plants such as roses, and in similar materials that the bees can easily cut through and excavate. Nest tunnels may extend 5 to 10 centimeters deep, and coarse sawdust is thrown out at the entrance. After the nest has been produced, leaf cut bees collect fragments of leaves to construct individual nest cells. The bees cut leaves in a very distinctive manner, making a smooth semicircular cut several centimeters in diameter from the edge of leaves. These are carried back to the nest and used to fashion nest cells within the previously constructed tunnels. Each leaf lined cell is then provisioned with a mixture of nectar and pollen. An egg is laid and the cell sealed, producing a finished nest cell that somewhat resembles a cigar butt. A series of closely packed cells are produced in sequence, so that a finished nest tunnel may contain a dozen or more cells forming a tube 10 cm to 20 cm long. The young bees develop and remain within the cells, emerging the next season. Leaf cutter bees differ from related species, in that they collect pollen on their abdomens, rather than on their hind legs. Mason ribbies are much like leaf cutter bees, prefer south-facing nest sites and use naturally occurring holes in either the bricks themselves, or in the mortar joints especially soft mortar, with a high lime or sand content. Nests are established in spring or summer, and contain 6 to 12 eggs, each in a cell provisioned with pollen and nectar and sealed, usually with mud. New adults emerge the following year to repeat the cycle. Nesting burrows are excavated or enlarged by use of the bee's jaws. <laughs> The tawny mining bee and Rena falva is one of several species, commonly seen around gardens in early spring, which dig nest burrows in lawns and similar places. This bee is about the same size as a honeybee, but covered with fairly dense golden hairs. The female bee makes a small volcano-like mound with the soil excavated from the nest. There may be many nests close together, giving the impression of communal life, but each female is actually working alone. Nesting activity lasts only a short time, perhaps two to three weeks after which the small mounds of earth around each nest entrance soon disappear, with no permanent damage to the lawn. Take care not to confuse solitary bee nest mounds with the mounds of earth caused by the nesting activity of ant colonies. Solitary bee mounds have a single large entrance hole in the middle, and by watching for a short, while on warm sunny day, you will see the bees coming and going to collect pollen. If left alone, these bees will often nest in the same area year after year, and provide an annual service by pollinating your early flowering fruit trees and shrubs apples, pears, currants, and gooseberries and other garden plants, so helping to ensure good crops later in the year. Wool carder bees females use the hairs from plants to line their burrows, using their mandibles to cut the fibers into cell walls, and are quite choosy about the flowers that they will visit for pollen and nectar. The best flowers to plant and attract the wool carder bee is the well-known garden plant, Lamza. Also fox gloves and purple toad flax work well. Wool carders also like wound works and mints. Minor bees are one of many familiar black and yellow summertime bees often mistaken for bumblebees. These are also solitary bees and do not collect honey, nor do they sting. 
though they could bite if handled roughly. They are good pollinators, and serve an increasingly important role as honeybee populations decline. You can actually enhance minor bee populations, by providing dried mud blocks for nesting. In England you probably won't see any carpenter bees the size that this man saw in Mexico, he says. When as me and I were close to the bottom of the canyon near Chavarello I spotted a big insect. It looked like an oversized bee with beautiful blue metallic wings. Later I learned that it was indeed a bee, a carpenter bee. The insect was very docile, and I had no problem at all with getting it on my hand. The photo gives a good impression of the size of this carpenter bee. In England they look more like this. Carpenter bees are the most common species in the genus Xylocopa, which resemble bumblebees, except that these carpenters have a relatively smooth abdomen and bumblebees have very hairy abdomens. Can you work out which is which? The carpenter is on the left, the bumble on the right. Carpenters dig holes in dead wood, where they lay eggs and provision them with nectar and pollen. Carpent bees are sometimes considered pests, because they will bore holes in wooden sheds, porches, and other structures, but rarely do any serious damage. Common carpent bees are about 25 mm long, but some species are smaller, and have black or metallic coloration. Like the leaf cutter and mason bee, adult carpent bees spend the winter in nests, constructed the previous year, and become active in April or May. After mating, Females excavate new nesting tunnels or use pre-existing ones. Nesting tunnels are about 12 mm wide, and start on the end of wooden beams, or try tangles to a surface. They penetrate the timber for 10 to 25 mm, before turning and following the wood grain. Tunnels are clean cut, and may extend 15 to 20 cm. Most bumblebees are not solitary. They live with others, so we do not describe them here. However there are six species of cuckoo bumblebees. Cuckoo bees do not build their own nests. Like the cuckoo birds, these bees lay their eggs in other bees' nests. It is thought that the cuckoo females locate their host's nest by smell. She may go right in and sting the existing queen to death then lay eggs, or she may snake in the nest, and hide for a few days until she smells the same as the nest, then lay her eggs. The workers then rear these eggs, as if they were their own sisters and brothers. Cuckoo bumblebees usually have the same pattern of hair color as the bumblebees nests they lay in, but cuckoos are slightly less hairy than ordinary bumblebees, and have a much harder body. Neither do they exude wax so there are no weak points between their abdominal segments. If there is a fight between a cuckoo and another worker or queen it is almost impossible for them to force their sting into the cuckoo body. Finding nest sites has become crucially important for our bee population. You can give them a helping hand, improve pollination in your garden, and give your family a lot of pleasure. How do you build a nest for solitary bees? Any type of cavity is likely to prove attractive to solitary bees. Try putting up old, dry, hollow stems of plants like bramble. You can use bamboo canes, or even drinking straws. The holes inside need to be between 5 to 10 millimeters in diameter. Tie them in a bundle, and fasten them horizontally to a tree, or post about one and a half meters off the ground and facing south. They must be horizontal or sloping gently down at their open ends to stop the rain getting in. Or you could put them into a little wooden bee house. If you can't find any canes with holes the right size, another way to do it is to use a block of untreated softwood, a section of a dead tree would be ideal. Do not use any timber that has been treated with chemicals. Get an adult to help you drill lots of holes into it each 15 cm deep, and with diameters varying from 6 to 10 mm. Do not drill all the way through. Once again stand, or hang so the holes are horizontal, and the rain cannot get in. This video was produced by the Save Our Bees campaign run by the British Science Association during National Science and Engineering Week 2009. We would like to thank more beekeepers for their help in making this video. Images used in this video are copyright by the following. Moray Beekeepers. The BBC Natural History Unit. WWF UK Ernest Charles. Kendall Bio Research Services. Laboratory of Zoology at the University of Mons Hay Nord Belgium. Neil Brumhill. Bugsandweeds.co.uk. John Bockmer. Colorado State University. David Prasad. Bumblebee.org. 
the Natural History Museum, Bumblebee Conservation Trust, the University of Minnesota, Tropic to Topic Plants, for the sound of a wild bee we thank Dodroid.